The blazing equatorial sun began its descent behind the rolling hills of the African savanna, casting long shadows over the workers toiling on the Uganda railway. Men in sweat-drenched shirts heaved picks into the rocky earth, their brows furrowed in concentration and fatigue. Among them was Samuel, his dark skin slick with sweat as he wiped his brow with the back of his hand. He was a towering figure, built like a baobab tree, strong and resilient. As Samuel swung his pickaxe, memories of his village in the distant hills lingered in his mind. He had left behind a small family and a life of farming, enticed by the promise of steady work and new horizons. But as each day passed, the weight of his decision pressed heavily upon him, the distance from his loved ones growing more profound. Oi, Samuel, another one! Let's get this done before the damn lions decide we're dinner! hollered Peter, a burly English foreman with a sunburnt nose and a disposition as rough as the terrain. Samuel paused, his eyes meeting Peter's. All right, but remember, the more we rush, the more mistakes we make, he cautioned. But Peter was already barking orders at another worker, and Samuel returned to his task with a sigh. He tightened his grip around the pickaxe's wooden handle and drove it into the ground. The sun had cast its final glow, and darkness began to creep in, swallowing the light. The chatter among the workers grew hushed as the first stars appeared in the night sky. Samuel felt it, the heaviness in the air, the tingle in his spine. Something was different tonight. The whispers in the wind spoke of a terror yet unknown. The land itself seemed to hold its breath, as if in anticipation of something dreadful lurking just beyond sight. All right, pack it up. We continue at first light, announced Peter, clearly eager to be done for the day. Tools were stored, fires were lit, and men gathered around in groups. Their conversations drowned out by the chirping of crickets and the occasional distant roar of a lion. But Samuel couldn't shake off the unease, as he sat with his friends, John and Ali, around a flickering fire. He found himself glancing into the darkness beyond the perimeter. The vast expanse of the African wilderness stretched out like an endless sea, hiding secrets in its depths. You seem troubled, my friend, observed John, following Samuel's gaze into the dark. It's probably nothing, Samuel muttered, forcing a smile. Just tired, I guess. But deep down, he knew it was more than that. A shiver ran down his spine as another lion's roar echoed through the night, closer this time. It was as if the very land they stood upon was sending a warning, a foreboding message that defied words, but was universally understood. And then it happened. A blood-curling scream shattered the night, followed by shouts and the frantic pounding of feet. Samuel leapt up, his heart pounding like a drum. What the fuck was that? The night was pierced with screams and the chaos that followed seemed like a bad dream. Samuel, John and Ali joined the rush of men bolting towards the source of the cries. Hearts pounding, they arrived to find a tent torn asunder, fabric hanging in shreds the ground soaked with blood. Mother of God, whispered John, his face ashen. John's eyes were wide with disbelief as he stared at the destruction before them. The night air, usually filled with the sounds of the savannah, was now eerily silent, as if nature itself was shocked by the brutality of the scene. Shit, muttered Samuel, his eyes widening at the sight before him. Two workers, their bodies ravaged, lay in the pool of their own blood. This can't be... this can't be real! Peter, visibly shaken but trying to maintain some semblance of authority, started barking orders. Form a perimeter! Torches up! We need to find whatever did this! But what could have done this, sir? stammered Ali, his voice tinged with a fear that Samuel had never heard before. This ain't the work of any ordinary predator. Samuel's gaze drifted over the savanna, the vast expanse of grass and trees bathed in moonlight. The beauty of the landscape belied the horror they had just witnessed. He knew Ali was right. They were dealing with something far more sinister than they could have imagined. Samuel felt the weight of Ali's words, their truth hanging heavy in the air. No ordinary animal would hunt like this, not with such brutal, almost calculated malice. 
As the workers combed the surrounding area, torches flickering like wavering spirits, Samuel couldn't help but feel that they were the ones being hunted. Every rustle of the grass, every snap of a twig, felt like a prelude to another strike. The search yielded nothing, and the workers were left with nothing but their dread as they retreated back to their makeshift camp. Fires were stoked higher that night, and guards were doubled, but no one really slept. Samuel lay on his mat, eyes staring into the embers of the dying fire, contemplating the fear that now gripped them all. In the flickering light, the faces of his fellow workers looked haunted, each man lost in his own thoughts. Samuel knew they were all thinking the same thing. Who would be next? The uncertainty was as crippling as the fear itself. It wasn't just the killings, it was the method, the intent, and the message it sent. Whatever was out there wasn't just hunting for food, it was hunting for the thrill, stalking them like a vengeful spirit. And Samuel knew, deep in his bones, that the nightmare was far from over. As dawn broke, casting its golden light over the savannah, Samuel made a decision. He would not stand by and watch as his friends and fellow workers were picked off one by one. Whether it was bravery or sheer foolishness that guided him, Samuel couldn't tell. But he knew one thing for sure. It was time to face the shadow. The day was an oppressive symphony of hammering, sawing, and men shouting orders. Yet despite the semblance of activity and progress, the atmosphere was saturated with a lingering dread. Every rustling leaf, every bird taking flight, sent shivers down the spines of the workers. They all knew something else was sharing their daylight hours, biding its time, waiting for the fall of night. As evening approached, the workers' conversations dwindled. Eyes darted to the encroaching shadows, and laughter was scarce. The camp, usually bustling with life at dusk, was subdued, the fear of the shadow casting a pall over even the simplest joys. As the sun began to set, Samuel found himself staring at the distant hills, their outlines turning into dark silhouettes against the reddening sky. He was gripped by an unshakable feeling that the hills had eyes, eyes that were staring right back at him. Samuel, you're a million miles away. Join the land of the living, mate, said John, breaking his trance. Samuel turned his attention back to his friend. Sorry, was just thinking of what needs to be done. John looked at him puzzled. About what? Samuel sighed deeply. About ending this. I can't sit back and do nothing. That night, as darkness draped the camp, Samuel's resolve turned into action. Armed with a machete and a makeshift spear, he decided to stand guard. His eyes strained to pierce the inky blackness that lay beyond the firelight. Every so often, the wind carried a low growl, a sinister murmur that set his heart racing. As the night deepened, the campfire's glow seemed to shrink, as if the darkness was physically pressing in. Samuel's thoughts turned to his family, to the stories his grandmother used to tell of spirits and demons that roamed the African plains. And then it happened. Just past midnight, a bone-chilling roar echoed through the camp, a roar so guttural, so filled with malevolent intent that it felt like a physical blow. Samuel's blood ran cold. This was no ordinary lion's call. It was a declaration of war, an unspoken promise that the shadow would claim another life that night. The camp erupted into frantic activity. Torches were lit, and men armed themselves with whatever they could find. The fear had turned to a frenzied determination to survive, to fight back against the unseen terror. As if on cue, the distant thumping of drums began to emanate from the nearby village. They were war drums, beating an urgent rhythm that translated into two words. Run, hide. But Samuel knew running wasn't an option. He stood his ground, his body tense, ready for whatever would emerge from the shadows. We can't let fear dictate our lives, he muttered under his breath. Samuel gripped his spear tightly, his knuckles whitening. He felt a shiver crawl up his spine, but he shook it off. His eyes darted from one shadow to the next, searching, waiting. 
Suddenly a low growl, almost a whisper, floated in from the darkness. It was close, very close. Samuel felt his pulse quicken. His breaths became shallow and rapid. He tightened his grip on the spear and machete, his eyes scanning the blackness. Time seemed to stretch into an eternal moment, each second pregnant with dreadful anticipation. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw it. A pair of glowing eyes floating like demonic orbs in the dark. They were fixed on him, unblinking, calculating. Samuel felt his heart in his throat. This was it, the face-off. He could either be paralyzed by his fear, or he could fight it. The shadow lunged, a dark mass of muscle and fury, its eyes ablaze. Samuel sidestepped, his spear at the ready, and thrust it forward. The weapon met flesh, and a deafening roar shattered the night. Samuel had wounded it, but not mortally. With an agility that belied its size, the shadow disappeared into the darkness from whence it came. The camp erupted into chaos once more, men pouring out of their tents, lanterns swinging in the dark, and faces painted with fear and confusion. But for the first time, there was also a glimmer of hope. Samuel, what in God's name happened? Peter rushed toward him, his eyes widening at the sight of the bloodstained spear. Peter, usually a figure of unyielding authority, now looked at Samuel with a mixture of shock and a newfound respect. It was a rare moment where the rugged foreman's facade softened, revealing the concern and fear lurking beneath. I faced it, Samuel said, his voice tinged with both exhaustion and exhilaration. I faced the shadow and I drew blood. His words, simple yet powerful, resonated through the camp, igniting a spark of hope in the hearts of the men. Samuel, who had once been just another worker among them, now stood as a symbol of their collective courage and defiance. A murmur ran through the gathering crowd. They looked at Samuel, then at the spear, and back to Samuel. It was as if they were seeing him for the first time, not just as a fellow worker, but as something more, a glimmer of hope in their nightmare. Tomorrow we hunt it, Samuel declared, his voice steady, his eyes filled with a newfound purpose. Tomorrow, we end this. The determination in Samuel's voice seemed to ignite a similar resolve in the men around him. Even in the face of such terror, the spark of rebellion had been lit. They were no longer just workers on a railway. They were hunters, protectors, men pushed to their limits and standing firm. As the men retreated to their tents, Samuel found himself unable to sleep. He replayed the night's events in his mind, each moment unfolding in vivid detail. The growl, the eyes, and that split second when he thought it was all over. But more than the fear, what he felt was a simmering anger, a growing resolve to end the shadow's reign of terror. John and Ali approached him, their faces a mix of concern and admiration. You're really going to do this, aren't you? John asked. I have to. Samuel replied, looking at the spear that lay beside him. I can't let it take anyone else. Then we're with you, said Ali, his voice filled with a quiet determination. We fight together. Samuel nodded, grateful but unsurprised. These were his brothers, in all but blood. Thank you. But know this, we're not just hunting a lion. We're hunting a monster. Dawn broke with a sense of urgency, its early light casting long shadows that seemed to pulse with an unspoken tension. Samuel, John, and Ali readied their weapons, their faces set, their hearts heavy. Peter watched them, his eyes meeting Samuel's. You're a damn fool, you know that? Peter said, his voice gruff but not unkind. But if you're going in, take these. He handed Samuel a pair of old but well-maintained hunting rifles. Thank you, Samuel said, understanding the unspoken respect in the gesture. As they set out, the weight of their task settling in, Samuel felt a strange sense of calm envelop him. It was as if the land itself, tired of the blood spilled on its soil, was guiding them, urging them on. They walked in silence, 
their eyes scanning the horizon, their ears tuned to the faintest of sounds. Hours passed, the sun climbing its arc, when Ali, his eyes sharp as a hawk's, motioned for them to stop. Look there, between those trees. Do you see it? They squinted, their eyes following Ali's outstretched hand. And there it was, the outline of a cave, its entrance veiled in shadow. A den, John whispered, his voice tinged with dread. A tomb, Samuel corrected, his eyes narrowing. Let's end this. They approached the cave cautiously, each step a delicate dance between courage and fear. Samuel felt the weight of the rifle in his hands, cold and unyielding, yet strangely comforting. Beside him, John and Ali held their own rifles at the ready, their eyes vigilant, their fingers hovering over the triggers. The air was thick with tension, every sense heightened. Samuel thought back to his family, using their memory as a shield against the fear that threatened to overwhelm him. He knew that what they were about to face was more than just a physical threat. It was a confrontation with the very essence of their nightmares. As they neared the entrance, Samuel felt a chill run down his spine. The air grew dense, as if saturated with the malevolence that had claimed so many lives. The mouth of the cave seemed to leer at them, like the gaping maw of some hellish beast. This is it, Samuel whispered to himself. The stories he had heard as a child, tales of demons and monsters that lurked in the dark corners of the world, suddenly felt all too real. He looked at his friends, his brothers, one last time. Ready? They nodded, their faces set, their eyes locked onto the abyss before them. Whatever happens, Samuel said, his voice steady despite the fear. We stick together. Remember, it's not just our lives at stake, but those of everyone back at camp. Their agreement was a silent pact, a mutual understanding that transcended words. Taking a deep breath, Samuel led them into the cave, his rifle aimed forward, his torch piercing the darkness. They moved slowly, their eyes straining to make out the shapes that loomed in the shadowy depths. The walls seemed to close in on them, the ceiling lowering as if to swallow them whole. As they delved deeper, the remnants of the shadow's past victims became more apparent. Tattered clothing, scraps of metal, bones both human and animal, were strewn about, telling a silent tale of horror and despair. What kind of creature does this? John's voice was a hoarse whisper, barely audible over the sound of their own footsteps. Samuel didn't answer, his focus fixed on the path ahead. The air was stale and heavy, charged with a primal terror. He could feel the presence of the shadow, a palpable force of malevolence that seemed to permeate the very walls of the cave. And then, they saw it, the remains of its feasts. Bones, clothes, and the haunting remnants of human life littered the ground. But what struck Samuel the most was the arrangement, the way the bones were laid out as if in some perverse ritual. This isn't just a den, he murmured, his voice tinged with horror. It's a sanctuary. A low growl echoed through the cave, freezing them in their tracks. It was a sound that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere, a sound that turned their blood to ice. On guard, Samuel barked, his training taking over. They formed a tight circle, their backs to each other, their weapons at the ready. Fuck, hissed John. It's here! They spun around, their torches casting frenetic shadows on the walls. And there, in the furthest reaches of their light, were the eyes, those damned glowing eyes, filled with a malevolent intelligence that defied nature. The eyes seemed to hold them captive, a predator assessing its prey. Each man felt a primal fear rise within him, a reminder of their vulnerability in the face of nature's raw ferocity. The shadow lunged, its roar filling the cave as it charged toward them, a nightmarish blur of teeth and fury. Samuel aimed and fired, the rifle's report echoing like thunder. The lion roared in pain and fury, but did not fall. Again, shouted Samuel, his voice tinged with desperation. They fired another volley, 
hitting the shadow but still not bringing it down. The beast was upon them now, its eyes ablaze with rage and pain. In that moment, time seemed to stand still. Each man's life flashed before his eyes, a rapid montage of memories and dreams, fueling their will to survive against this embodiment of their darkest fears. With a guttural cry, Samuel thrust his torch at it, the flames catching its fur. The shadow roared in agony, its body briefly becoming a living pyre before it collapsed, its life extinguished as quickly as its flames. The cave fell silent, save for the heavy breaths of the men. They stood in the aftermath, a mix of disbelief and relief washing over them. The shadow, the terror that had haunted their nights and overshadowed their days, lay defeated. They stood there, panting, their faces pale, their hands shaking, but they were alive. And for the first time in what felt like an eternity, the weight of their fear lifted. Is it over? asked Ali, his voice trembling. Samuel looked at the fallen beast, its eyes now lifeless but still haunting. Yes, he said, his voice filled with a weary relief. It's over. They emerged from the cave, their bodies battered but unbroken, their spirits lifted but forever changed. As they stepped into the light, they heard the distant thumping of drums once again. But this time, the rhythm was different. It was a song of victory, a song of lives saved and demons vanquished. As they walked back toward the camp, Samuel felt the land breathe a sigh of relief, as if thanking them for lifting its curse. But as he looked at his friends and thought of those they had lost, he knew that some curses were never truly lifted. They merely lay dormant, waiting for the next shadow to fall. Thank you for letting me guide you through today's chilling tale. If your heart's still pounding and you crave more, don't hesitate to like this video and subscribe for more unsettling stories straight from the darker corners of the human mind. On your screen now is another tale or playlist that promises to keep the suspense alive. Until we meet again, be careful. The darkness has eyes and it watches.